السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فجعلهم كعصف مأكول So we begin inshallah ta'ala with, with an interesting comment This is made by Dr. Fadl Salih Assam al-Ra'i Hiya suratun fiha ibratun li kulli taghiyatin mutakabbirin mutajabbir Fi kulli al-usur uh, wal-azman uh, He says this surah has a warning and a lesson for every, for every rebellious, arrogant, uh, tyrant that lives in any age, in any time, in any civilization, any nation. So he says this is not just a surah talking about the oppression of Abraha against the Kaaba. This is sending a message to anyone who hopes to uh, you know, wreak havoc upon civilian populations and overpower a, one, a nation or a ruler trying to overpower another nation by means of their military might with the understanding what are they going to do to fight against us. They have no military capability to stand up to us. And with that you know, assumption, with that arrogant assumption, they go in and they don't care about the consequences. You know, when a, when a society is not in power, they talk about the rule of law. And they call people to abide by the rule of law. But when the society has power, they say the law is for everyone else. And we are above the law, we're beyond the law. And the law would apply, it's a nice thing to apply to, but we have a special situation. And who's going to stop them? Even if they trample all over the law and the regulations, they're the most powerful you know, civilization. Who's going who's to question them? Who's going to question their oppression? And this is something that has happened throughout history. It's not difficult to see examples of that even in our time. But this is something that you know, the, the surah is uh, alluding to. Now he gives reasons why he thinks this is the case in the surah, why we shouldn't limit it to a discussion only of the historical accounts, which of course are critical. لِذَا جَاءَ فِعْلْ تَرَى This is why the verb tara came, alam tara. Now there are different ways of saying this. The first part of the ayah roughly translated is, didn't you see? That's the first part, didn't you see? Common translations will read, didn't you see how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant? This is probably a common translation you've heard before. But he's commenting only on the first phrase, alam tara, and specifically the verb to see. That's been used in the present tense. بِصِيغَةِ الْمُضَارِعِ لِلْدَلَالَةِ عَلَى الْإِسْتِمْرَارِ وَالتَّجَدُّدِ And the specific use of that. Now in English translation, it comes out as past tense, right? أَلَمْ تَرَى It comes out as didn't you see. And clearly if you understand English, that's past tense. But in Arabic, there's a rhetorical function here. And as opposed to saying أَمَا رَأَيْتَ Right? You could use the past tense function also, but that wasn't used. When that's used, the past tense, it alludes to something continuous. In Arabic rhetoric, in, in balagha, in linguistics. It re- refers to something that didn't happen once, that happens over and over again. And this surah from a linguistics point of view, we'll, we'll l- learn something amazing about this surah. How the change of tenses carry amazing lessons in them. So that use just of the mudari, the present future tense in the Arabic, with the word lam, regardless of the presence of the word lam, indicates that this is not just something to observe and think about for that time, but for all time. Now we look at uh, some commentary by Shawkani rahimahullah. وَهُوَ تَعْجِيبٌ لَهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِمَا فَعْلَهُ اللَّهُ And this is to, to give the messenger in a sense of amazement and wonder in regards to what Allah Himself did with the people of the elephant. As though he is saying, قَدْ عَلِمْتَ يَا مُحَمَّدْ You already know Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. أَوْ عَلِمَ النَّاسَ الْمَوْجُودُونَ فِي عَصْرِكَ or the people who are present in your time, they also know very, very well. وَمِن بَعْدِهِمْ And even the people that came after them, بِمَا بَلَغَهُمْ مِنَ الْأَخْبَارِ الْمُتَوَاتِرَةِ مِنْ قِصَّةِ أَصْحَابِ الْفِيلِ Because of what came to them from continuous narratives and narrations and people telling the story over and over again of the story of the elephant. وَمَا فَعَلَ اللَّهُ بِهِمْ فَمَا لَكُمْ لَا تُؤْمِنُونَ This is the last part of Shawkani's commentary. He said, just in the أَلَمْ تَرَى كَيْفَ Allah Azza wa Jal, it is as though He's saying, didn't you realize what Allah does to His enemies? So what's wrong with you? Why don't you believe in Him? You're using that to take pride in how Allah protected His house. Then what's, you know, why don't you take that next step towards Iman? 
Now, finally, alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. The second alam. The first alam was alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil. The second alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil. Now, didn't he common translation didn't he make their plot in waste? This is very literal translation. Or didn't he place their plot in vain in naught? <coughs> or reduce it to nothing? First, let's pay attention to the word alam. It's mentioned again. So the first question was alam, the second is again alam. And here, the, the purpose of this, these are the only two alam by the way, there's no third, right? These are the only two. And these are the only two present tenses, tara and yaj'al. Now there's arsala after this, right? And ja'ala after this, and so the language changes a little bit. Now, I told you, I mentioned before, when the present tense is used, there's a continuity. There's a continuity. And if you look at the language, he took their plot and reduced it to waste. This is something not only that Allah did for them, but anyone who makes plots against Allah's deen, Allah will do this over and over and over again, hence justifying the use of the present tense, yaj'al in this case. Even though the meaning comes out in the past tense, the conjugation is in the present form, the mudara form. That's the first thing. Then the word ja'ala as opposed to fa'ala. But the first ayah said, fa'ala, kayfa? Fa'ala, here, referring to Allah, alam yaj'al, that alam yaf'al. Different verb is being used. What's the benefit here? Ja'ala is to take something that already exists and transform it. What the word itself indicates is, Allah, let them have their plan. Let them finish the entire execution of it. Plan it out for months and months. Get secure the funds, secure the army, secure the training, secure the means for the journey. Let them run it the whole way and put it to waste at the very end. He transformed, he morphed the plan at the very end. In other words, he didn't deviate the plan in the beginning. He could have not allowed them to consume an army or to, to amass an army, or to come up with the funds, or to be able to make it all the way. You know, they, they could have never met Abu Riqal. Remember the navigator that got them all the way to Mecca? They could have never met him if Allah had wanted. But he let them think the plan is in order. But he took that plan and made it different at, at the very end. So that's what Ja'ala seems to indicate. Is that this is, alam yaj'al. That Allah Azza wa Jal let them play, played them along. Basically played them. And at the end, Allah Azza wa Jal pulled the strings on them. By the way, this, I don't know if I've given you this parallel before, but it's, a, it's an interesting parallel. My teacher, Dr. Sami, used to give it to me. He says, when someone's rebellious, one of the things Allah does is, uh, He lets them go free. And they, they feel like they got no problems, they can get away with anything. And it's compared to a dog that is wild. It's barking at you, it's biting at you. So you tie it up, right? And you tie it up with a one-foot leash. So it can't really move much. But if you really want to punish this dog, you take it in an open field and tie it to a 400-foot leash. Because if you tie it to a 400 foot leash, you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna think that it's free, and it's running full speed. Right, when it's, it's only a foot long leash, it can only pull so much. When it's running full speed and it reaches 400 feet, what happens? You see, it gets yanked, it gets choked, and that pain is far worse than the one foot leash. The dog thinks he's got freedom, but this is actually worse for him. وَيَمُدُّهُمْ فِي طُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah extends them in their rebellion. Let them remain blind in it. So Allah extended their means all the way to get to the Kaaba. Allah could have destroyed them much before. But He let them execute their plan. Let them play along. Let them dig their hole deeper. This will only make their punishment worse. Not only are they mushrikun, but they're committing crimes against Allah Azza wa Okay. وَأَرْسَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّرًا أَبَابِينَ And He sent against them birds. That's, I'm, I'm, again, literal translation right now. He sent against them birds. Uh, ababil, herds upon herds upon herds. Now, just a historical comment describing the, word, the, the birds. When Abdul Muttalib turns back, فَالْتَفَتَ He turned away. وَهُوَ يَدْعُوَ And he was making dua to Allah. فَإِذَا هُوَ بِطَيْرٍ Then all of a sudden he sees birds. مِنْ نَحْوِ الْيَمَنِ from the, Coming from the direction of Yemen. Which is interesting because the army also came from Yemen, right? وَاللَّهُ Wallahi, he says. فَقَالْ He says, I swear by Allah, إِنَّهَا لَطَيْرٌ غَرِيبَةٌ it is very strange kinds of birds for sure. Mahiya bi najdiya wala tahamiya. They're not from Najd and they're not from Tahama. Kana ma'a kulli ta'ir hijr fi min qarihi wa hijran fi rijlayhi. And in every single bird, there would be a, a pebble in its beak and a, two pebbles in each of its claws, in its feet. Okay? So that's his description of it. Qala Abu Ubaidah Ababil. Abu Ubaidah describing the word Ababil says, Jama'at fi tafarruqa. Multiple groups of different kinds. In other words, it wasn't one species of bird, there were many different species of words. قَالَ nuhas Nuhas, a great, a great um, grammarian of our history, wrote I'arab al-Qur'an, وَحَقِيقَتُهُ أَنَّهَا جَمَعَاتْ عِظَامِ And the reality is that these are huge groups. 
huge, awesome flocks of birds. Not one, but many different flocks of birds. I haven't seen too many birds in Texas, but you know, if you travel between like New York and Maryland, sometimes birds are migrating, especially in the area of Delaware, a lot of birds, right? So you'll see for a good half hour, just a flock of tens of hundreds of thousands of birds, a continuous stream. And according to other historical narrations, they were coming from every direction, and you couldn't see the sky, it became dark. SubhanAllah. It's an incredible scene to even imagine. Okay. The first thing to note here is Allah Azza wa Jal sent upon them, which what we learned in the previous ayah, He sent birds upon them. In another surah in Surah Al-Ahzab, to defend the believers in the battle of Al-Ahzab, Allah sent wind, wind against disbelievers. So Allah said, you know, We sent against them winds and armies you couldn't even see. So there are armies of angels, birds in this case, wind. So Allah Azza wa says, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ جُنُودَ رَبِّكَ إِلَّا هُوَ No one knows the armies of your master except he. No one knows the armies of Allah except he himself. So Allah Azza wa uses whatever he may, whatever he chooses to become his army. It can be wind, it can be angels, it can be birds in this case. SubhanAllah. The thing, the, there are interesting vocabulary inside this ayah. The first word, تَرْمِيهِمْ is the present form of the word Rama. Now, this is a past tense incident. This, some, this is something that happened in the past. But Tarmi is being used. The present tense is being used. When the present, the mudari' form is used to refer to something in the past tense, the purpose of that is to mention that something happened over and over again. In other words, they didn't just throw it once, they kept throwing. The pebbles, they kept coming down and kept coming down. So if, it, if, used, if the word Ramat was used, Ramat hum bi hijaratin min sijil, it would just mean once, and that's it, they fell. But it seemed like it just keeps on coming like rain. And that is captured in the word tarmihim in the present form. Then the word Rama yarmi, the origin of the word, doesn't just mean to throw or to pelt. The first meaning of it is to throw something from a distance. So by using that word, one of the things we're learning is that the birds were at a very tall height where they were dropping it from. And you guys know now, the higher something is and you drop it, the harder it falls. Acceleration due to gravity. So these little pebbles are hitting like bullets by the time they're getting down to the ground. The other thing is, Rama includes, or this, this Rami in Arabic includes, something that is thrown, not just thrown, but thrown with a specific target that you're aiming for. And by using this word, Allah Azza wa Jalla is teaching us every single pebble it's like Allah Azza wa Jal targeted every single criminal that it's supposed to hit and where it's supposed to hit them. So it's these guided missiles that Allah Azza wa Jal was sending with the word tarmihim that He sent against them. Then in regards to how these pebbles hit, إِنَّ الْحَجَرْ كَانَ يَدْخُلُ مِنْ رَأْسِ أَحَدِهِمْ وَيَخْرُجُ مِنْ أَسْفَلِهِ That the pebbles, they would enter into the skulls. And this is important because the skull is the hardest part of the hardest bone. It's the toughest bone to break. Right? And the only way you can bash somebody's skull really is like a bullet or something, right? It's something really hard hits it. But the pebbles would go into their skull and come out from behind them. It would go through them. And that's what the, the, uh, that's what the, the eyewitness accounts are describing. Now we come to the final ayah. By the way, you notice already the language is very, very graphic. It's, very, it's, it's full of very strong, sharp, not very pleasant imagery, right? Allah didn't just say He destroyed them, He is giving us really explicit details of how He destroyed them. You know why that's important? Because of the word kaifa in the beginning of the surah. Allah didn't just say what He did with them, how He did with them. And when you ask the question how, you are at, the answer comes with details. When you say what did you do, you could just say I ate lunch. When you say how did you do it, then you're describing details, you're giving details, you understand? So the, the graphic language in the surah is perfectly situated because of the word kaifa instead of the word madha. What did your master do? No, how did your master deal with them? How did he destroy them? So the answer is coming in this surah. Then we find these two words, asfim, faja'alahum, then he made them, he transformed them. Ja'ala in Arabic is used when you have something and you turn it into something else. Like you can take wood and turn it into a table, ja'ala. Not khalaqa. Khalaqa means you created out of nothing. But ja'ala, you took something and you made it something else. Okay? So for example, in, in Allah Azza wa Jalla says, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطَ He took you, He made you into a nation, a balanced nation. So you're already there, but He transformed you. So Allah is saying, these people, Allah transformed them. 
So that, and by the way, when ja'ala is used, some, someone was something else before and there's something else after. So they were a powerful army before. And now when Allah transformed them, what did they become? Now we'll find out. فَجَعَلَهُمْ He didn't say, فَجَعَلَهُمْ عَصْفٌ مَأْكُولٌ He said, ka عَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٌ ka is used for tashbih. It's used to give likeness. He made them like. He made them like. So Allah wants us to compare what they look like to something you can see. This is also important. We're not there. We're not in front of these armies. We didn't see what happened. It's not on video. So Allah is presenting us video by means of His words. He's presenting us the imagery by means of His words. You want to know what they look like? Because I asked you to wonder, how did I deal with them? You want to know how they look like? Let me tell you, they looked like ka and then asf in ma'kul. So let's look at both of these words one at a time. Asf in Arabic and asif especially is used for winds. Winds that blow, you know, uh, cut off leaves that are, you know, these, these crumpled up leaves. Especially in the fall, they're all over the ground. And when wind is blowing, you see them in the air. That kind of wind is called asifa. Arrih in asif. Asif, literally that which is blowing the, the, the leaves and the pebbles in the air. Asf is the, asfa actually, is the, the, the leaf of a tree that has been cut off and withered and broken up. That's what that is. Asf is also used for straws. Because when the wind blows, what else blows? With these, these tiny straws in the ground that are weak. They, they get plucked out and they're flying all over in the air. Right? So that's what the word asf is. But he says he made them like asf, but he added ma'kul. Chewed up, eaten. Ma'kul means that which is eaten. And asf and ma'kul was used by the Arabs. You know these, these camels or these other, these, uh, these other cattle, they're going around the ground, they're chewing on stuff. And the animal picks up a large chunk to chew on in its mouth, but some of it falls out. Some of it, some of it, it falls out. And the remains on the floor is called asfun ma'kul. So Allah says, you want to know what they look like? They look like those leftovers that the animal has chewed on and it just slipped out of its mouth and fell. That's what they look like. If you want to know how badly they were crushed and destroyed. The idea being, when an animal uses the full strength of its jaw to chew on it and really crush it, grind it, and then it comes out in this goop on, on the ground. This is how Allah crushed these armies and how He made them. This is one meaning of it. Then ma'kul also means that which is, not just that which is eaten, that which is supposed to be eaten. In other words, something that is, you know, ma'kul is something that is there, and it can't help itself, you're gonna go eat it, like you know, an animal that is about to be eaten can at least run away. But straw or hay or whatever sitting in front of an animal, that food is defenseless. Its destiny is to get destroyed. Allah compares them to a helpless piece of food that has no option but to get eaten up by its enemy. It's like they had no escape. So asfun ma'kul is used. Then the commentary by Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah, أَيْ سَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ تَعَلَى عَلَيْهِمْ طَيِّرًا That Allah imposed upon them these birds, تَرْمِيهِمْ بِحِجَارَةٍ That would pebble, that would stone them with sharp, uh, precise targeting, with stones, مِنْ طِينِ الْمُتَحَجِّرِ From clay that has been turned into stones, فَصَارُوا بِسَبَبِ ذَلِكْ صَرْعَى حَالِكِينَ And because of that, they became completely crushed, chewed up, completely destroyed. And Allah describes the state of them, فِي تَمَزُّقِهِمْ وَتَنَاثُرِهِمْ كَحَالِ أَوْرَاقِ الْأَشْجَارِ Allah uses this language to describe them, to poke fun at them. These people thought they were so powerful, and Allah compares them to the weakest thing. Not even a leaf that is connected to a tree, but a leaf that is plucked off of a tree. Completely weak. I mean, it's, it's the symbol of greatest weakness. It doesn't even take a force to move it, winds can move it. So Allah compared the strongest army to the weakest imagery possible. So may Allah Azza wa Jal give us a clear and a deep understanding of this book and the ability to practice upon it. May Allah Azza wa Jal take the good things that are said and enter it into our hearts. And anything that is incorrect, may He remove it from our memories and our hearts. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بأصحاب الفيل ألم يجعل كيدهم في تضليل وأرسل عليهم طيرا أبابيل ترميهم بحجارة من سجيل فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ